Hey, how are you, beautiful soul? My name is Malika Lee. Thanks for checking this out. We're going to see how this is going to go because I'm determined to do, I've already done kind of a half a take. It's close to my bedtime and I just had that wave of inspiration. So we're going to talk about the weeding process. And um, this is part two or part three, maybe part three of uh, the planting and watching it grow, that analogy. So this is part of that. So whether you've seen the other two videos or not, I can, I will put like a link somewhere, either up here, up here, or in the description. Um, if you're seeing this one first, which is fine, and then circling back. But the idea and the concept is the process and supporting ourselves in developing uh, an idea or some inspiration. So part of that and using the analogy of a plant for this part is going to be talking about weeding and fertilizing. I'm going to put it all together and I'm going to talk about very briefly uh, different ways on different levels to both weed and uh, if it is relevant, fertilize. Okay, so let's get started. The importance of weeding, as we know, like with when it deals with plants, um, is that weeds take up valuable space and or nutrients from the soil uh, that can detract from what we want to grow. So that's what we're applying um, this specifically to your ideas around creating and energizing uh, and manifesting something that you want to grow in your life. Okay, so let's get to it. So weeding, physically examples of weeding include if you know about the magic of tidying up, it's like clearing out a space. So I talked about in the other video, creating a space for the plant, but then here in this one about weeding, it's about an ongoing process. Like, you know, like I said, you can't just weed a garden one time and think you're gonna be good. Those weeds continue to come back. So it's an ongoing process. So an ongoing representation of the weeding process physically is like cleaning things out, whether it's a drawer, whether it's your closet, like creating a practice physically, if that speaks to you, of continuing to clean things out, to let things go, to get that energy flowing um, physically. And what I have found, though, is that how we deal with things physically corresponds to other levels. So like a person generally who's a hoarder or has a hard time of letting go of physical things generally also has a hard time of letting go of things of the past and or romanticizing the past. And so even if it's a physical letting go, it helps get the energy flowing on other levels. So that's an example, throwing things out, donating things. Um, like I said, the magic of tidying up is a great resource um, for also blessing them. And, and giving them life to someone else, right? That, that, in, that it can fertilize them. Okay, so that, like I said, I'm doing this all the way through. So that's an example of weeding on the physical level. Um, an example of weeding on the mental level um, are identifying those beliefs that are no longer in alignment energetically with what you want to grow in your life. So if you want to have a romantic partner, and you catch yourself, you know, berating yourself about um, something and no one's ever going to love you. This is just a random example. That thought and belief is totally out of alignment and out of harmony with what you want to grow in your life, right? So um, in dealing with the mental aspect of belief, um, affirmations. So I, I listened to Tina Turner's uh, latest book. And she talked about, as she started her own transformation process, that she would, um, if she caught herself having a negative belief of something, that she would create an affirmation and say it eight times to that one time of belief. And that was her ratio. Personally, for me, I don't know, I use affirmations. I kind of I know that they work, but there's a, a component for me, like affirmations aren't always my go-to, there's other things. But if affirmations speak to you, in addition to, of course, saying them, is believing them, which can also bring up more weeds, right? Where you're like saying something that you don't really believe, which can uncover another belief 
um, that also needs to be weeded out by not being acknowledged, challenged, and then creating an affirmation uh, that is that is the fertilizer that's more in alignment with what you want to grow. So let me say that again. The weeding out is identifying those beliefs that are incongruent, not judging them, not you know anything, but uncovering them. Okay, so that's part of it is uncovering it and challenging it is the rooting it out. And then the fertilizing of, of, the, of the plant that you want is by creating these affirmations um, to take the place of the weeds that we're pulling out of beliefs. Okay, I think that was clear. Next, emotional, um, an emotional weeding process, which a lot of people say, and we don't really, I don't know, I say we as a collective, it's feeling your feelings. So um, that is one of the most effective and powerful ways to weed it out is to like let the storms come up, to feel it, to acknowledge it without judging it, without condemning or trying to minimize. And it doesn't have to be like expressed, like you can feel your anger without going out and tearing some bleepity bleep up, right? Like you can just feel the heat in your belly. You can feel all of those things. And as long as we, and you can feel it with the intention of, of letting it go, right? Because sometimes we can get addicted to emotions, which is a whole other topic in video. And we can continue to like stoke and refuel the fire. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, is feeling it with the intention to heal it. So if you're feeling shame, if you're feeling guilt, if you're feeling things that are, of course, out of energetic alignment with what you want to grow in your life, then feeling it is one way to heal it, okay? So there's so much more on about emotions and feelings that I will get into, but not in this video. Just This is just like about the weeding process and giving you enough to like get started um, and to support you in getting started if you haven't started already. Okay, fertilizing for your emotions and fertilizing and creating the energy, right? That's in alignment with which you want to grow in your life. There's two things I put on there. One is doing, doing things in your life, either doing things and or sometimes uh, if you're like an actor, know how to do um, emotional preparation, is knowing how to generate within yourself feelings that are in alignment with what you want to create in your life. So if going back to this partner example, if you want a romantic partner in your life and the feeling of having a romantic partner is a deep sense of peace or of safety or feeling sexy or saucy or, or feeling loved. It's like feeling those emotions right now. So maybe you feel loved if you take a blanket out of the, the dryer and you wrap yourself in it. Or maybe you feel loved with the smell of chocolate chip cookies. Or maybe you feel loved when you let yourself sleep in on the weekend. So doing things and or in meditation somehow generating um, those feelings that are of the same energy through line of the thing that you're trying to create. Because at the end of the day, all the things usually that we try to plan in our lives are things that we think will make us feel better and or get us more respect to be seen. Like that's a whole other thing. But ultimately we think that what we're planting in our life that we will end up better off or feeling better and or getting the outer respect um, and being seen or valued from other people. So if, if you're doing something and you're planting something because ultimately you wanna feel valued, then create things in your life right now that support you in feeling valued. That's fertilizing this uh, plant and energy that you want to grow in your life. Um, and the other thing, of course, around the emotional is like the visualization and feeling, feeling as if you already have it. So those are the, the two things to fertilize on an emotional level. And of course, the thing to weed and to remove is about it, on an emotional level is feeling it to heal it without any judgment, just giving it the space to express. And just like the weather, right? Like there'll be a storm. So emotionally, there might be a whole bunch of different feelings and emotions. And then eventually it calms, like if we just let it be. Um, excuse me, and homostasis is reached again, a great resource that I might talk about a little bit later that goes into that is um, 
a book called The Presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E -E, Process by Michael Brown. That was so helpful um, when I came across that book a number of years ago on my emotional healing journey. Last but not least, energetic and emotional and energy, those are kind of connected. Um, but the, the rooting out um, of energy, I think this both in, roots out and energizes from what I've been experiencing and exploring is, about, is around having mantras and chanting and toning. Toning are doing sounds um, that have a certain vibration um, and that can resonate with your chakras and like another a form of that does toning and sound is like qigong. So um, basically that my understanding and what I've been exploring is that, you know, through sound, through mantras, there's an energy when it's being said, when it's being thought about, when it's being affirmed. And that energy, of course, um, has a, a frequency and by chanting it, you come into resonance with it. So um, Tina Turner attributes a great deal of the transformation that she had in her life and finding her worth and value through chanting for like hours, right? Um, and sound healing and listening to music, like all of those things. And even when I get into listening to music, I think it's also important to point out the lyrics of songs and the energy of songs. Like if you're on the path of uh, wanting like going back to the romantic love, you know, paying attention, singing songs, listening to songs that are in alignment with the type of partnership and relationship you want um, versus like, you know, there's a lot of different types of music and different <laughs> vibes and, and everything. So just paying attention to like what you're introducing into your space uh, energetically uh, through music and otherwise. But that's a great way of like, um, both weeding in, on an energetic level and fertilizing at the same time from what I'm learning. So I think that covers the weeding process. And like I said, it's kind of a wash, repeat, wash, repeat, wash, repeat, wash, repeat. Oh, shoot. There was one other thing that came to mind about weeding. Ah, forgiveness, 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 forgiveness. I cannot talk about weeding without forgiveness. That is such an important aspect. So whether it's self-forgiveness, like, oh, I had this idea and I wish I would have done this five years ago and I didn't, we can beat ourselves up for that. So forgiving ourselves kind of like lets some of those, uh, it weeds out that old shoulda, coulda, woulda energy that takes up a lot of energy um, so that you can focus it now on on which you want to grow in your life. So forgiving parents, relatives, forgiving yourself can be one of the toughest things. Um, but that is an integral part of the weeding process as well as forgiveness. Okay, that's all for now. Please comment below if there's any other things that help you in the weeding process of getting rid of things and letting things go, as well as what you add to your own soil to fertilize your um, your dream and your life to fulfill the things of your hearts, to fulfill your heart's desires and visions and inspiration. Many blessings. Thank you for rocking to the end of this video. Um, if there's anything else on here, if there's anything that wasn't clear, because like I said, I am winding down and getting sleepy, please comment below and I'll answer your questions. Until then, many blessings, be well, and keep shining, keep thriving. Peace.